You are well known as a translator of the liturgical texts into English, uh, and a person who knows very well the uh, manuscript tradition, the, the tradition of the te liturgical texts in, in Greek, even in Syriac, and uh, well, obviously in, in, in other languages. Um, why do you think we need uh, 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 new translations of the liturgical texts? Are they uh, 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 pastorally justified? Uh, are they justified for uh, being used by the church nowadays? What do you think about this? Well, I mean, there are, there are two things. The first thing is that in most of our parishes in England, the majority of the majority of people do not understand ancient Greek. They are now, some of them, second, third generation. This is even more true in America and in Australia. And we are asking them to come on a Sunday morning to listen to three or four hours in a language they do no longer understand. And therefore, it seems to me that the provision of translations, whether as a, a book they can follow or even the use of English in the actual services is becoming a necessity. <laughs> After all, this is exactly what happened in the Slav countries in the time of Kirill and Mathodi. They did exactly what we need to do now. Um, and I think that in those days they were less um, worried by the use of the vernacular, although there were problems that they had. And, but the thing is, a lot of our people are very attached to the, what they call the original. It is, it, is a, it is a fact that people come to church and they come very largely to a sort of performance. I, they come and they sit there and they know what happens and they, it is almost it is much influenced by the um, l later interpretation of the of the eucharistic liturgy as a sort of a play about the life of christ right? but i i sometimes ask people well, where's the crucifixion because we have the explanation that the the entrance of the gospel is Jesus coming to preach. We then have the, the entrance of the gift, which is the funeral procession of Christ. Where does the, where is the crucifixion in this? Because then we have the resurrection later on. With the, the, so I think there's a whole um, need to... to uh, what are we doing when we come to the liturgy? Uh, my brother, who is a theologian as well, um, and he says that the, the Eucharist, the Eucharist is a Bible study followed by a meal. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the, the, the structure. Yeah. And this structure, we've, we've, we've allowed, uh, uh, no, to, uh, it's disappeared. And I think this doesn't only apply in, 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 the, in, the, dis, in the diaspora, it applies in Russia, it applies in Greece, it applies in Orthodox countries. Yes. Well, at the moment, I am, although I'm very old, but I'm looking after a little London parish, uh, which for various reasons is largely old ladies. Um, and they're little Cypriot ladies, they're lovely. And I say to them, you've been listening to these things for 60, 70 years, you know them by heart. Well, join in. And they look, and they like it. Because some of our singers, if the people try to join, they go, well, they, go no. they don't like the people joining in to their concert. Right? And I think this is, you know, if it becomes a concert where um, the clergy are the actors and the, and the chorus is provided by the, by the singers, um, this is not what the Eucharist is about. And I think this is a great, a great um, misapprehension of what it's really all about.